Hey, welcome back to the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Sponsored by Shy Love LLC. Thank you all for tuning in to the second segment of Shy Love Radio Show. Um, and today we're going to be on this segment, we're going to be talking about the Uber incident, the sexual assault, and the trauma. And we have some announcements. <clears throat> If you would like to host your own radio show, Pop Radio Worldwide is welcoming new hosts. Please contact him at popradioworldwide at gmail.com. And if you cannot reach him, contact me at shylovechicago at gmail.com. March 14th is the Shy Back Workshop. Go to Eventbrite for your tickets. Artists and models, this is your time to take your career to the next level. If you're not leveling up, what you doing, baby? So um, the Uber situation is significant to me because I had my own personal story with them a few months ago when a man was trying to take me uh, over. <sighs> what? Yeah, and so dog on Indiana. I what? had to get out on the tollway. It was, was just like phone. crazy. I think I was on the phone that day. <sighs> so. Oh, snaps. You know what? Uh, my girl shouldn't be watching this because she <laughs> she be on the phone. Just talk to me in the Uber. I don't know these numbers. I'm like, wait a minute, man. It's cool. It's cool. And now you talking. Look, we gonna take a lift then. <laughs> so, no, really, what happened? Yeah, um, I, I was coming from the show, and he they he was blaming me on the GPS system. Um, I'm I was in my phone. I look up, I'm noticing like, this isn't the way to my house, you know? <laughs> so I'm telling the man that this is not the way to my house. Uh, first he was acting like he was going to, you know, engage with me or whatever. Then he just started to ignore me while I'm standing telling him, like, I stay, this ain't like nowhere near my house. Like, he on the Skyway, he going towards the Skyway. I'm steady telling him he was ignoring me. Um, I was talking on the phone who I was with at the time. Um, and this is, you know, I said it was my, nobody but mama did God because... He tried to pay for the toll, and it wouldn't. His car wouldn't go through. Mm, bless and, and he Come kept on, on swiping, and it kept on buzzing red. Angels. And then he happened to go to the toll booth where it was only one. It was only one worker out that night. Mm -hmm. And he happened to go, you know, to the one where it was the worker. And she stepped out to, you know, see what was going on with his car. And that's when I used the opportunity to be like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Oh, check this out. I, I see it over like, um, this is an Uber gone wrong. <laughs> I do not live this way. He's trying to take me, you know, over state lines into Indiana. I told her I didn't feel safe. I asked if I could get out and wait with her. She was real nice about it. She let me get out. They oh, it was a woman driving? Uh, no, it was a man driver. Who oh, had, okay. But it was a woman that uh, told me. Got you, got you, got you. Okay. And uh, she let me stay up in one of the little toll booths. They called the little police and everything. Yeah. The police officer ended up coming to get me and stuff. And, um, you know, Uber um, blamed it on the GPS. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, we got to cover our tracks. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, refunded me back my little money or whatever. But, you know, after that, you know, I'm not walking around to be caught lacking. I'm just going to put it like that. Like, That's crazy. I was, on, I, I was on my yeah. phone and I, I seen it. Uh, something about an Uber driver doing that, and I was like, man, is this crazy? Yeah, it's like... You gotta keep a deuce-deuce in your booth, girl. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> but, but what, what kills me is when, when you uh, order an Uber, they already know who you are, what you man. look like, like, you know... So it's like, people think it's safe because... Yes, you know what I'm saying? They, you got all the little information sick, right there and everything. So, me hearing, and, and then... Um, it was just extra crazy because it's like after that, all these stories started coming to my attention about Uber and Lyft and like similar things happening. And then it was like stories similar to mine to where they telling the driver one thing and he just starts to ignore them and keep driving all of a sudden, you know? Well, you know, call me old fashioned, but I never even really liked the idea of getting into people's cars and it's safe <laughs> because they got a thing with a thing and then we could just do you know what I'm saying? Well if they run off with you trust me they bring you back <laughs> oh yeah for sure oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I'm definitely you one of your knowledge <laughs> no, but, no, one, one thing about me though you know I'm, I'm a protector mm. and you know I love my wife so mm. I take her to the door 
pick her up, yep. drop her off, yep. wherever she yep. going, wherever she want to go. On the phone. I'm, I'm the chauffeur. Call me Bentley. <laughs> <Fine word. laughs> Apparently, this lady did not have anyone to, you know, take her to the door and make sure that she was okay. A 28-year-old woman was sexually assaulted on Chicago's north side. Chicago. Not the west side, not the east side, not the no. south side, where we're usually hearing the stuff at. Up north. So what happened to Sharon? What, what happened? <laughs> Now, the bar staff at Redmond's Ale House, she was out kicking it. They actually ordered her an Uber and then took her and made sure that she got into the correct car because sometimes they be drunk and they're getting into mm -hmm. an incorrect car and then, you know, here come a situation. But they actually made sure she got into the Uber that they ordered. <clears throat> uh, it was reported that the driver raped her and then dropped her off in, in the Kilbourne Park neighborhood. But well, she was identified. This one nobody but mom did God. He got the she full rape kit. He used like, to yeah. live. He used to. She yeah, used to live in the area. The rape kit yeah, on. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I saw on my phone. Right? That's crazy. She yeah. was identified by a previous neighbor who then called nine one one and notified them of the sexual assault. So do you know? It's bad enough that she would sit up there and violated her dog on body. But then you didn't even take her to the location. You didn't even take her home to make sure she, you know, got up and have. You gonna drop her off in a in a another neighborhood where luckily somebody knew her at because they used to be neighbors previously. If that wasn't the spiritual guidance and angels coming through to help this this lady, yeah. you know, you I'm already was rude them. in what yeah. she was doing and you're going to be ruder. The least you could do is not make it ass trauma. I mean, my God, I, I just, I, don't, I just feel like it should be some boundaries. Here's my thing. They ordered the thing for her now. Yes. I watch too many movies now. They ordered the thing for her. She didn't order the thing. They ordered, they ordered the thing. Her, yeah. That sounds like to me, I mean, this is you're a writer. You're a movie guy. You write movies, you know. Beep, boop, boop. We got one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. I'm just saying. But after her neighbor called the police, they came and got her. She received a sexual assault forensic exam, a.k.a. a rape, a rape kit, mm. where they said she was in good condition, which means he didn't tear her up there or not. Oh. Thank you. So. She still wasn't in good condition. <laughs> Well, they're talking, they're talking, they're talking, they're talking, they're talking, as far as her physical, you know, the, the physical structure of the vagina was still intact. Well, he probably was physically structured uh, at three inches. OMG. <laughs> um, unfortunately, now. Because only a punk would do that. You know what I'm saying? Only a it, punk could try to rape a woman. It is unknown Come on, man. when and where the assault took place. They said that Uber issued a statement I never got, saying. I never got it. That no one should have to go through that, and it was a horrible incident. They are cooperating with the police and providing info, and the driver's access to the Uber app has been removed. The police are working with the woman to track down the Uber driver and determine where exactly the sexual assault occurred. No one is in custody, according to WTO. Wow. My question is, are they doing background checks on these people? Exactly. They're supposed to. It's crazy. Well, you know what? Things happen, man. People snap. They mind snap. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, everybody got, what, what's she call it? What is, what is it? PSTB? P P P right, right. Yes. All the letters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But you know, it's like, you never know what a person gonna do, you know? It's like one minute they know, the next minute they, they mind snap. Yeah, but yeah. rape a woman? I mean, yeah. I just, I never got that. I never got it. It's the same thing as what makes you kill a man. That's a little more justifiable than Not raping really. a woman to me. Not like, really. You know Not really. When you stepped on my shoe, I blow your brains out. How's that justifiable? You didn't give me a chance to wipe your shoe off. Seriously. Well, that's, that's true. true. That's true. That's true. So it's, yeah. it, it's, 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 you know, no matter how you look at it, wrong is wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't nothing justifiable with, with wrong. I just think that it's a shame that, uh, you know, you just don't feel safe anymore. Oh, yeah. You know, you shouldn't have to walk around with things on you to be prepared. Me personally, and speaking only from myself, mm. I don't like having to check a person, get an understanding with a person, <laughs> go there with a person. Right. It hurts It hurts me. It hurts me to do it. And the fact that you have put me in a situation to where I feel like I need to protect myself, I'm going to you up. You understand? We is not gonna play no doggone games out here. Right. You can't tell me that my life is less important because you wanna come and 
uh, you know, violate my, my, my being and my personal space. Right. And we as women, I should not have to walk around. We have some tips here. First tip, look like a tough target. I should not have to walk around carrying myself as a dude always. <coughs> So that somebody don't attack me. You ain't gonna get the straight back braids. I should. Yeah. <laughs> I like said it all. I used to wear it with my little <laughs> <laughs> You gotta go outside and looking very unattractive. Yeah, that, that's well, crazy. Well, I'm gonna tell you though. One one thing is, women have got to understand late nights and all that. I understand this independent thing y'all got going, and I don't need a man and this that and other. But in the same token, it's like. You guys will put yourselves in situations. You ain't got no business out by yourself late Ooh, at night taking We're going to come right on back and talk mm. about putting yourself in situations. Mm. And, and we're going to talk about that. Mm. Mm. We're going to come right back with the Shy Little Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeartRadio, and Spotify Premium. Oh, oh, oh. Bitch, I go hotter than hotter way. My money faces on under I do not settle for underpay. Bitch, I- hey love, welcome back to the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. We talking about the Uber incident and where this uh, 28 year old woman got sexually assaulted. We're giving tips. Look like a tough target. Uh, Mr. Jones here was talking about putting yourself in situations. I want to say this. We have to be yes. Keep eyes up and alert. That's the second tip, right? But at the same time, I don't care where you was at, who you was with, what you had on. It is not your fault if somebody violates your body in your personal space. You understand? Because that victim shaming is a lot of stuff that's going on out here and people are not reporting it and not coming forth because they have Somebody that told them, well, you know, you shouldn't have had that on. You shouldn't have been over there. What you was doing out there late? It don't, it doesn't matter. To keep yourself safe, yes, be aware. You know, certain neighborhoods, uh, whatever, whatever, let people know that uh, where you going and so forth, somebody that you could trust. And then you got to be careful with that because you could be letting the person who's going to do something to you, you let them know your every dog going to move so it's easy to slide up on you or, or set it up. But no, it's, it's never, it's never your fault if somebody hurts you. Like what? It's not your fault if somebody hurts you, ladies. You hear me? Even men, because men are getting sexually assaulted out here. <laughs> Hide your kid. Hide your wife. They raping everybody out everybody, here. Everybody. You know what I'm talking about? And, it, and it's not your fault. <coughs> You, you was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Somebody's targeting you, whatever the little situation is. But they say, try not to show fear and nervousness. Mm. Make yourself difficult to deal with. One example was to like drop your weight down. They say, bend your knees and like drop your weight down. Make yourself difficult to deal, deal with. Uh, thrash your body from side to side, make it harder for them to get a g- good grip on you. Basically go crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Hit the person in the groin area. But that might turn some people on, you know. OMG. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You got to be careful. Like, people are sick, you know. OMG. If they choke, if you're getting choked, they say aim for the thumbs and not the fingers. Try to break that thumb loose. Uh, if you're going to kick, kick with a flat foot. If they got you in a headlock, grab for their <laughs> hands and try to, you know, break that. Aim for the body parts linked to breathing or breathing. Mm-hmm. The groin, the nose, the eyes. Throat. Th- chop them in the throat real quick, you know. And get your conceal and carry. Get your carry. conceal and carry. Fight. That'll stop all, alleviate all that. And if you got to <laughs> fight, fight. But they say keep your chin down to prevent a TKO. Because somebody hit you in that jaw real quick. And <laughs> <laughs> they used to call you jawbone. It's over with. It's over with. <laughs> <laughs> Try to knock the hits. And know when to submit to save your life because sometimes you're gonna come across people who are determined to do what they're gonna do regardless. Like they came prepared for you to try to fight back. Wow. You know, and as I was told, uh, you know, people ain't gentlemanly about, you know, snatching you up and doing what they gonna do to you. So <sighs> then you gotta be careful anyway with this uh sex trafficking anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh geez. Sex that's trafficking. Right. How about you said at the end of last one? About putting yourself in that 
Position, yeah. Right, no, yeah, we want to how we close and that. How we yeah, close. yeah, yeah. Yeah, put, put, being aware of your surroundings, putting, oh, your, yeah. what, putting yourself in a situation. The situation, right. You remember he closed the last second? Yeah, now let's talk about, how can you put, let's talk about that, elaborate. Somebody said self-defense self class on the, on the thing. Self-defense class? Yeah, they said yeah, self-defense self classes. Class. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you how you put yourself in a situation. You know, with women, women are, are, are attractive. You know, you get a few cocktails, you don't mean no harm, you just flirty in a club, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. But to that guy, it's a she want me type mentality mm -hmm. that he's carrying. And, and you're giving off them vibes. You, you feel me? You so you giving something. off them vibes you like you easy. Like she throwing herself at Yeah. Me. She just being friendly with a little wing at you. Right, you know, she just being nice, but he taking it like she throwing herself at me. So he going to push his move, you know what I'm saying? And this person might be... A little, a little mentally challenged. You, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> but you just call yourself winking and being nice, being flirty, smiley, because you out having a good time, and then things happen. So you know, a lot of times you got to be careful with that. You can't wink, wink and smile at everybody. You can't, you can't do that. Don't put yourself in that situation. Everybody has to be winked and smiled at. Mm. What a world! <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to see. It's a cold world. world. What a world. It's a cold world, but I mean, it's you the know, truth. they found a new little planet. They trying to see if it's uh, habitable. I just feel like they should just some put them up, put them over there. Should that's, that should the be planet. a separation because, especially when you know, late ladies' night. I need a ladies' night actually. Just you going out? Virus, that's all. <laughs> right, 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 right. When, you know, when, when that Uber driver <laughs> raped up, she should have had the coronavirus. Just hit them with or the just put on that mask. Yeah, like I'm trying to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> the that is, it is ridiculous <laughs> that you have to go through so much or you have to uh, withdraw and, and hold yourself back. First of all, like you said, you out, you had a few drinks. Um, and especially if she out with her girls and it's a ladies' night, that's really what they focusing on is just the ladies having fun. So we really not paying too much attention to y'all fellas, to be honest. Um, Wait a minute. Y'all just a part of the party. Now now, now, really. Now, hold we on, hold the hell on. So, if this so is you a telling me I'm dancing with you after this dance is over with, let me go. <laughs> so, y'all go out to the club to drink and listen to music. That's what it and is. And you don't care about fun. no dudes, nobody, more chestnuts, none of that. Oh, okay. If you, come, if you, you come capping in, like a little girl. I'm going to say something real quick because this is very, very, very important. The message that we put out, which is you got to be careful when you go out here to have a drink, to jump in an Uber after you done had a drink. Right. Um, and like Melody said, you got to be aware of your surroundings. And my brother said, you got to be careful how loose you is out here because some of these dudes, you act a little loose and they think it's go, go, go time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you just having fun. You know what I'm saying? But uh, my whole thing is, uh, I was just trying to say, be careful, man, uh, of who you call a friend, man. And, and, and just be careful oh, be careful of these substances that's out here. Don't take no drinks from just anybody because that girl was just raped on Facebook Live not too long ago inside of a club yeah, yeah, yeah. while she was dancing yeah. on the dance floor by some dude yeah. who put something in her drink. Yeah. And uh, nobody and said, you know, they didn't even do nothing about it. They ain't locked it up. And if you leave your drink, drink don't go back, back and drink it. Yeah, leave that yeah. thing alone. Get another yeah. one. That, that uh, Facebook laugh, it freaked me out. You want to know why? Because when we go to the club, that's how we dance. But that's so disgusting time, time, for some thirsty, excuse me, brother, saying, for some thirsty old dude no, right. to slip a Mickey and a girl drink at a club right. yeah, to yeah, try to give it to her on the dance for while she orders uh, some drink. Yeah. That's some sick stuff. Yeah. I don't know, you know. But that's, that's, that's you know, I feel like we need to do yes. Those who can be victimized do need to become more aware and try to you know protect yourself from it if you can. But the real iron fist needs to come down on those who are taking it the wrong, taking her friendliness as yeah. uh, I, I as you an tell it as an invitation. Right, right. You know, a lot right. of times those, like those are the you get away, you, you, you be take it away from alive. the abuser and put the emphasis and the attention on the person who didn't get abused, and you telling them where you shouldn't have been wearing this, you shouldn't have been doing this, you shouldn't have been drinking all this, that, and the other, when the fact of it is that he should have had his dog on mask together. He should not have taken that as a... Ah!
Well, baby, you got crazy motherfuckers out here. Oh, so y'all protect yourselves. Easy. Medea say peace for peace. <laughs> and we gonna be right back. Cause, you know, this sexual assault causes what? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. And we gonna talk about the triggers. And so forth. So we'll be right back with the Shiloh Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Going down, yeah. motherfuckers ain't knowing yeah. that I got the city on L-O-C-K, nigga. I got the city popping off. Already. Club turn. Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. We're talking about the incident with the Uber and the sexual assault of 28 year old woman got sexually assaulted up north. So we were talking about the story, giving tips on how to try to protect yourself, and sexual assault more than likely produces post traumatic stress disorder. Oh my God. And when you have that, you know, you have feelings of fear. You just don't feel safe. Feel like you can't really trust anybody. You feel feelings of shame, especially if you are around people who are telling you some type of way, low-key, that it was your fault that you got raped, that you got assaulted, that it's your fault that somebody hurt, hurt you. Um, for people who have been through something like this, as family, as friends, giving tips on baby keeping yourself safe versus, well, you always wearing them little booty shorts, well, you know, whatever, whatever, that is not conducive to a woman's healing or a person who has been assaulted at all. That is not conducive to it. You need to be supportive. You need Absolutely. to let them, um, you know, tell their story and, you know, say what happened because a lot of women bottled it in. And then, you know, a lot of people are being called crazy and stuff. And, you know, I can't get next to her or she flipping back and forth. But it's because she done been through some type of trauma and not comfortable talking to somebody or done already heard how you feel about those type of situations and not comfortable even coming to you to tell you about it. So we have to be more nurturing and compassionate when somebody is yes. saying, I've been hurt. Yes. Even if it's a situation that you would have handled differently or you would not have gotten yourself into, regardless, this person is going through it. It is affecting them how it is affecting them. And we need to be more mindful of how we are receiving each other in our pain, painful moments. Okay? You know, we were talking about love in the first segment. And, and this is the time when you apply real love. Right. Mm. You know, when, when you're being supportive, when you're being understanding, just being that ear helps. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Let her vent, let her, let, her, let her pour out, let her cry out, and just be that shoulder. Just, just support her, you know, and, and try to encourage her to do things differently, you know. And, and, and you know, I want to say this to brothers. You know, if you, if you have a lady, a wife, you know, girlfriend, sister, niece, mother, cousin, you know, it's our job, too, to prepare them for, for the thoughts of a man sometimes. I know sometimes we try to shut them out, but sometimes we got to let them in. And in situations like this, you got to let them in. You got to tell them, you know, yeah, a lot of times the booty shorts, this, that, and other, makes you a target. You look like you up for grabs. Wow. To certain men. You get what I'm saying? To certain men, certain men don't even pay y'all attention. But then you have certain men that pay you a little bit too much attention. Compassion is the act of, I mean, yeah, compassion is the act of. Love, yeah. So, so the thing is, it, it's more of if you're gonna dress like that. Good advice is don't be out there by yourself like that. Facts. You know, don't don't be out there. You know, it, it's okay to be sexy. Be sexy. You know, that's what a woman does. She be sexy. There's a place and a place. Uh, there's a uh, there's you know a place for everything. Right. And, and you can't go, go hang on on sixty third with no booty shorts. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you gonna go in the trenches with some booty shorts, some trenchful shit's gonna happen to you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to the club with your girls and you wanna wear some booty shorts, that's appropriate. That's the club, you know what not. But if you going in the hood, well, you know it's nothing but vultures and savages. That's not really what you want to be wearing around them kind of guys. Exactly. And in the club, in the hood. booty shorts on, right. you can't be bagging it up, throwing it on them guys, making them. Well, that's you, you, you selling him a fantasy, and he want to make it a reality. 
and you don't know what his mental is. You don't know this guy from Adam. You grinding because he buying drinks and this yeah. and another. So I have a and, and he want to cash out for his drinks. And he tired of the strip club. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, because like you're saying, it's a man's way of thinking and perception of viewing things. Can we have some men who understand, who think above that? Oh, you, you, you. To right. start to help these others recondition their brains. Oh, I because you, you don't see you yes, don't see us women no. saying um, y'all be happy. We, you know, we we like when y'all put the jogging shoes, jogging, jogging pants I'm, I'm on. You, you, know what you don't see us wearing y'all. Betty, you're 100% right. 100% right. And it's all about each one, teach one. Right. They just had a video right now. Four young men uh, watched and recorded uh, a, a young lady get her ass whooped for about 40 minutes on the video. Just, just watched it and taped it while dude beat her ass. You know what I'm saying? Whoop. Like if any of us would have been in a... Man, what you do, man? Get your hands off. Right. You know? yes, okay, but, no, 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 no. now these dudes just sat there and watched and now I just I'm only saying this, Melanie, because I'm saying you're right. But the society, mm -hmm. yeah. okay, listen to me. The society we live in, you know, uh, uh, the perception that people have about minding their own business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's and it's about again each one teach one. You know, uh, and it's it's about speaking out, saying, "Hey, that was some phony shit." Instead of recording that shit, y'all should grab, do they man, right. get your hands off right. that girl, man. What's wrong with you? You know, um, and that's all. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this too. A lot of people don't realize times have changed. Like when we were coming up, we was we were raised with a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. You know, things was a lot different back then. You know, and and now it's it's a totally different. Atmosphere. It's, it, the way you approach a woman now is different. I'm gonna give you an example. I was, st I was coming out the store, saw a little guy standing at the bus stop, and you know he knew who I was. So I spoke to him. The little chick was waiting at the bus, and he was like, "Hey, B, you know, call out her name. Give me, give me your number." She started laughing like, "You lucky yeah. my bus coming," and gave him the number. I seen him. So, so with that being said, if you allow this type of treatment, you get what I'm saying. Yes. This is the treatment you're gonna get. So, and, and if this is what they're used to, they feel like all women are the same way because they don't know no better. Because it's a totally different generation. Or you a lame you know? if you nice to them. Right. With all that I think the gentlemen are, are, are supporting you totally from watching the whole yeah. dope conversation. But I think also, Melina, I don't want you to take it too, like, chauvinistic, like, right? Right. That they're looking at the picture of some of the women that really, really just out here and doing it to themselves, right. you know what I'm saying? Because there is a few girls Ooh, that know. set up a, a guy, they don't even know what they, you know what, it's a lot of females, honey, that, so what I'm noticing in this generation, that just like the blind lead the blind, you know, number one, it's a lot of females out that had no strong male structure at all whatsoever, and they giving that home girl some advice about leave dude for, uh, uh, and come kick it with me at the club real right, quick. Right. And they was never had a daddy at home, a strong brother to raise them up. So they, you know, a lot of these girls, instead of leave your own man, need to, you know, work it out with your own man and mind your business and find you a damn man. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you never had no father figure around. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. be giving it, um, you know, that type of advice. Yeah, and, and that's true. But parents are a dying breed. We know nowadays. You know only. what feels good to you. You see the effects of whatever is going on. Me myself, it was a lot of things actually that was going on that I went opposite to because regardless of people saying that this is how it is, it didn't feel right to me. Exactly. So I went opposite. No, it, it's sad. Give us an example, mother. Yeah, yeah. Um, let, let, let's just say, uh, like you said with the club, with the uh, hoish ways or something like this, you know. Uh, you know, I don't know. People have a little whole pass is what it, it is. With it. <laughs> but as, as a little lifestyle, um, you know, uh, if he ain't got the car that's banging down the street, if he ain't got the, you know, all the money, big drug dealer money, this, uh -huh. that, and the other, um, girl, it don't matter if he, uh, Got all these other different women. As long as he's, you know, still coming home to you and taking care of your stuff, that stuff didn't feel right to me. Right. I want to get to know a person. First of all, I'm on my own stuff, so I'm always um, trying to build up mine. Yes, you want somebody who's gonna able be able to do for you and do with you as well. But I want to get to know the person to see if I like you in my personal space. Melanie, 
for the last two years, right? <laughs> you know how many girls, right, that I've been seeing with the highest of standards <laughs> and expectations, right? For they want they nigga to be like this, like you was just saying, the big ball of bank account, two, three debit cards, a couple of stash houses, and right. two, three old schools parked, and you know, a few runners and all that good stuff, right? But got four shorties by three different baby right. daddies and got Straight nothing but a legal out. card and they nails done once in a while from a few dudes that be giving them forty dollars, you know, because they think they cute. And once in a while, you don't want to, you know, you say for the forty. Forty for forty. You know what I'm saying? But 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 do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yes, but that's how it's probably because look at back in the day, you know, that type of stuff like come from grandmamas because a lot of times if they were young and the men that they were we were way older. So they was looking for stability. Mm. So it's like that got passed down because the men supposed to be the head of the household or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm like you. They, I got standards. Man. But it's like I, yeah. I want I want to know do we mesh? Is our chemistry good? I don't care about a big now. Wait, yeah, wait, what? What you saying now? Hold on, hold on. Come on, come on. Cause bring you little one if you don't tell him what you want. When JC said, when JC said you can't fit your hand in your new purse, I dig that. I like that. But some man to put your put that big rock on your finger and treat you like you less than the dirt up under his shoe. I seen it. So I rather somebody who's gonna cherish me and honor me, and we're gonna have that trust and that communication, and we are we have become one with each other. Because that's where the true elevation really comes from. You know, the, the great material things, that's it's that's, nice. that's attainable. You know what I'm saying? But what? how does this person treat you? That's 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 what matters to me. But we have all been conditioned uh, certain ways, and there are things that we have seen. And if it didn't, don't feel right to you, it don't resonate with your soul, just because, it, it, you know, society, society. We are society. Who do you think makes up society? Us, the people. Hmm. We are, that, that's like, I hear people like, oh, well, policy states. You wrote the policy. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? There needs to be some real accountability put out here. You should be able to wear what you want to wear, go where you want to go, stay where how they you want to stay, and be safe. And the men that you see around you are supposed to be protecting you while you're walking down the street, whether they know you or not. Well, Melanie is getting better. I mean, look at D Wade's daughter, a son, whatever now, and people flipping and identification, and you know, I'm a white man from Nantucket. I agree too. You know, so I mean, it's that. getting better. You know, what? you know what I'm saying? Like, Melanie, it, ten years ago. You know ago, what I mean? And I have a dick. You know, pop open. You know, I'm an artist, and I yeah. kind of live with my, you know, my heart on my sleeve. Everybody want pop rock. Uh, my daughter's gay, you know what I mean? Yeah. And after doing 20 years of being locked up, that was a little hard for me to deal with, you but know. It's getting uh, better, like, you know what I'm saying? But like, the difference, like John said, from 10 years, years ago now. and now, um, pop support the lesbian community, mm -hmm. community, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you let, let them yeah. live, bro. Uh, if you like another girl and you're a girl, hey, man, better do y'all thing. If, you, if you're if you a boy and you want some, you know, hey, hey, that's so good, <laughs> you right, uh, right, right, right. Hey, man, um, just love. peace, peace, man, peace to the world, man, uh, whatever it is, man, as long as you, but you it's love you, you, you uh, like humanitarian, you know? Yeah. But it's getting better. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? Beautiful. People can wear what they want good. and be who they want to be and You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I feel like, Women should be able to wear whatever they desire yeah. to wear. But unfortunately, in the society that we're in, you get some people that just are they are. You have to be more conscious where right. you're at. Right. We live in the number one capital murder rate of the country. Where is Chicago? Not anymore. Who is now? Uh, I think it was a... I forget. We are, Okay, we, we still... Number two. We, Okay, we still in Chicago. Chicago. You drive, we drive from number one to number okay. two. Okay, so we still, okay, my, my point is that, man, we still in Chicago, right? Right. And, man, this is the home of the Sam, man. This is the home of Al Capone. Right, this right. is the, the home of the mob, the pimps, the pushers, the crack, the dope. Come on, now. We not the home of hip-hop, but we right next to the home of hip-hop. And just like it was dirty in Harlem, it's dirty on Chicago Avenue, Madison, Whoa. 63rd, 79th. Hey, I, I mean, you want it, you know. So, Let's go. So, look, man, Chicago's rough. New York is rough. Uh, I know the other two cities for sure. You know, I don't know about too many other cities. But be careful, you know. You know, Kanye West 
hear this little interlude song that said poopity scoop. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? You gonna make me lift that shit up? Yeah, yeah. Saying a song. Make me lift it's called like, uh, lift yourself. I don't know. Yeah. I'm done with it's called lift yourself. He was saying poopity poop scoop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So poopity whoop whoop. Yeah, poopity whoop whoop. Poopity uh. scoop. So I'm thinking poopity <laughs> scoop. Okay, let's go the poopity shit scoop. Clean, clean this shit up. Basically. You hear me? Yeah. He. Yeah. Lift yourself, Kanye. Lift it up. Pull back them doggone layers. I, you saw other men doing whatever that they was doing. Do you remember the reaction and the response of the woman that they was doing it to? Mm. Is that the same response that you're trying to get? Just because you saw all your big homies and your daddies and your uncles and everybody doing their thing? This is like, thank God for growth. We're not number one murder capital anymore. We're number two. <laughs> Small steps. Small steps. They still matter. And we're going to be right back <laughs> with the Shy Love Radio Show on Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeartRadio, and Spotify Premium. For Viagra, Niagara Falls when she make it squirt Take the barrel from a 4-5 Put it into a 9 million, make it work yeah. Tell my enemies to stay alert Bless my shooters, I know they on dirt Do not listen, they gon' spray your shirt Plus you snitching, I saw paperwork yeah. you Hey, welcome back to the Shy Love Radio Show Pop Radio yeah. Worldwide I Heart Radio yeah. on Spotify Premium yeah. We talking about the sexual assault We gave you tips on what to do Now when that PTSD from that sexual assault comes in I'm going to help you out with that Until you get to the therapist, okay? So you're going to open up about what happened Tell it, talk to somebody Get it off your chest Reach out to somebody that you trust Make you a therapist appointment or call this rape crisis hotline, whose number I will give you all at the end of this segment. Remind yourself of your strengths and coping skills. And it's, it always, it's, it's kind of good to just help others, even when you are going through something traumatic yourself. It's like a, a double healing, you know what I'm saying? You can join a support group, acknowledge the truth. Because, you know, you just be like, I can't believe. I can't believe this happened. But you got to believe it because it happened. You have to accept like this is what happened to me. And then you take your, and okay, I hate it. I don't like it. Whatever emotion that come with it. Feel it. Acknowledge that. And then, okay, now what am I doing to prevent this from happening again? What am I doing to uh, help myself? become better so that this incident won't control the rest of my life or a certain part of my life. You have to recognize triggers, which could be people, places, smells, a certain date, mm. the sights, sounds, and just plan accordingly. If you know that a certain person who did this, you need to try to, first of all, you need to go to jail or the people need to handle this. Some, some, some need to be done. <laughs> but if ain't nothing done, you know, try to stay away from this person. If it's certain, say whatever it is that is reminding you of the incident, you need to try to formulate some kind of plan to help you cope so that you don't keep uh, re falling back into it. And a lot of times people say, well, you know, that's psychological, just shake it off. But the truth is that it's who wants to constantly and consciously keep remembering somebody hurting them, causing them trauma, and violating them? No, that's the way it has restructured the brain. Mm -hmm. Your nervous system is now stuck on high alert in there, and you just don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. So it's like whenever any of those triggers are coming about, you instantly go back into that, that mode. Yeah. So what you need to do is let yourself know, is that okay, you're acknowledging that it happened, but okay. I'm feeling my anxiety kick up or depression or whatever. I'm in the present now. Bring yourself, try to bring yourself back to the present. What happened is not happening at this moment. And if you are around somebody who is going through this, it's not always easy to bring yourself back in the present. And even if you do acknowledge like, okay, I'm not there, I'm here, but this is what I'm feeling, it's a process. So a lot of this stuff takes patience. You know, acknowledge what you feel 
and don't shut down. We have times where we shut down and isolate ourselves, and sometimes we do need to isolate for a little bit to, you know, try to come on back around. But not to the point to where you are just, um, you know, people don't even really recognize you no more. You know what I'm saying? Your whole spirit, whole aura didn't change. Mm -hmm. You can do things, coping skills, you can meditate, you can do yoga, tai chi. When you get to the point when, to where you are comfortable with somebody touching you, and fellas, you got to understand if your lady went through this, even though you're not the one who validated her body or whatever, she just don't want to be touched. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And don't make her feel bad about it. But when she does open up to allow that, you know, a little massage therapy, because that's where we get that affection and that comfort from with that, that tangibleness, you know, to, to, to touch the skin. And if you don't want nobody touching you, baby, hug yourself. Hug yourself and give, give yourself some love. Stay connected to life as much as you can and those who actually care about you. Try to renormalize your life and get back to your routine of things. Um, concentrate on your goals and accomplishing and elevating while you're healing. That's helpful as well. Uh, remember that this is an ongoing process. Take a break when you need to. Avoid programs and TV shows with sexual assault triggers, such as um, Law and Order SBU. I think that's the whole twelve seasons. You know, so like in rape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eesh. You know, eat right, exercise properly, get plenty of sleep because you have to understand this trauma has affected your brain. And sleep, actually, you heal in your sleep. You heal and you reset in your sleep. And a lot of times, trauma and sleep don't go together. You cannot sleep. It's going to affect. It's, it's going to affect it. So how it is that you can get some sleep, please do so. It's very important. Try to get some vegetables, uh, some fruits and stuff, some, some, some good foods into your system because a lot of that heavy food is draining and it helps to keep you down, okay? But just remember that this is a process. And if you know anybody who has been through any type of assault, have been victimized in any way, we as a people need to come together and have compassion. Even if you don't agree, even if you got your opinion about how you felt like it should have went or whatever the case may be, the fact remains that this person is still going through. So if you got any type of love for that person, then come and, you know, support them, check on them. You know, let them know that I may not understand exactly what you're going through or why it's taking so long for you to shake it off. But I'm here for you. And even if I, if you just want me to hold you, you know what I'm saying, why you crying? Hold her why she crying. If she need a distract, whatever it is, just be there like you will want somebody to be there for you. A lot of times you feel like you're entitled to receive certain treatment, but you don't have to give it back. And that's not, that's not the program. Tabernacle. Yeah. She said that ain't the program. <laughs> Tabernacle. So if you all have, you know, in, in, in instances with like the uber sexual assault, do you know that this mess been going on so, so much that they actually have lawyers specifically for uber sexual assault? Now that's Jeez. the problem. Wow. That's the problem. They have received so many reports. And what's extra crazy, it's like going back and forth. It's the Uber drivers that sexually assaulting people. And then I read some <clears throat> articles on uh, Uber drivers being sexually assaulted by passengers. Wow. I never know. Of course not. <laughs> and their number is 1-866-635-3160. That's for Uber sexual assault lawyer, suicide prevention hotline, 1-800-248-7475, Thousand Ways Martial Arts and Self-Defense Center, since oh. people feel crazy out here, 773-473-1400, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think when they started to allow DCFS and the state and everybody to come in to be over these people's households and people stop getting whoopings and discipline, people just started to go a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. 
because people just feel like there's no consequences for their for their actions these days. Like, and, you know, oh, OMG. The National Sexual Assault Line, 1-800-656-4673. Gentlemen. <laughs> That's deep. Man, you know, it's deep. Thank you all for being here. Um, I really appreciate it. You know, I, I call this sharing of the minds because we can all learn from each other and uh, collaborate and, you know, get a new perspective and a fresh perspective on some things. And is there anything that you all, as men, because we have to, we have to just uplift each other. But is there anything that you all would like to say to the people, to your fellow men, about um, treatment of women? What, what, what would you have to say? Including you too, Pop. What would y'all, what message would you all give to the society of men who still think you're crazy? We got to do better, man. Um, if you got any integrity, if you got any love for your mother, I mean, if you're young, you obviously ain't got no kids. But um, if you are a, a, a older or younger brother, just remember you got uh, your mother, man. You know, that, 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 that's who created us, created us all. And uh, I'm from the old school, man. You talk back to your mama, you get your motherfucking ass whooped. And that's the problem nowadays, man. Parents, you know, just pull their kid's ear and they get locked up. So I wish it was a little bit more lenient. On parents beating the shit out their kids real quick, Pretty much. the way I grew up, it's you know. You don't, so, you don't love them, you know. I just say, man, pick up your sisters, man. Just take all these sisters out here, like they was your mama, they was your sister, they was your daughter. That's what I got to say. I agree with him. I was just gonna say that too. Just think about your moms. Man. You know, you wouldn't want something like that to happen to us. So, you know. Have y'all ever seen yeah. y'all mama cry? Oh, yeah. Y'all sister. Yeah. The type of hurt. And disappointment, and it's so to the point where her looks is starting to change some sometimes. Mm. <laughs> and for you to put somebody else's daughter, somebody else's mother, come on, go ahead, Johnny. I mean, no, I mean, uh, just uh, kind of spearheading on what more recent and uh, Pop was saying. Yeah, basically, just think about you know what I would say is think about that person, that woman, you know, or like even childhood, that one friend that's a girl that made you feel so good about life and about things and taught you things and equate that to what you about to do if you're thinking about doing something stupid. I want to add one more thing, baby, before you close up. Just go to my, my, my brothers, right? If you are involved with anybody that makes you feel like you gotta put your hands on her, mm. walk away. It's simple as that. That ain't nobody you need to be with or you're not in a place where you need to be with anybody. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And Cook County Jail is has got a bed for you. You know what I'm saying? Simple Woo. as that. It's real life. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta you, you do have to know and understand your right. truth. There's something it. about this person is making you feel like I'm gonna give you the mecca mecca bing. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> the mecca mecca bing. That sounds yes. like something uh, that you serve with a corona. <laughs> Swing, Speak, right. Speaking of corona, <laughs> make sure to keep yourself protected from this coronavirus that's going on around here. And remember, coronavirus is not the corona beer, so don't exactly. stop drinking the beer. <laughs> no, no. They lost millions already. I know. <laughs> Prices and participation, baby. <laughs> and we will see you all. I enjoyed you all. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to my special guests. You all continue with your black excellence. You know, shout out to Sean. <laughs> See me again next Monday from 7 to 8, where we will resume with the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeartRadio on Spotify Premium. Don't forget about the Shy Back event on March 14th. And if you want your own show, holla at us. Love.
¡Caliente! Enjoy myself, man. Maurice Elliman Jones Jr., film producer, Twio Entertainment, We Fam, Andre Blaze, Rogers, High Fashion Demand. We enjoyed ourselves on the day, man. It's been amazing. The love is crazy. The Shy Love Show, baby. And let me tell you something Pop Worldwide Caliente, amazing. I Heart, Spotify, Melanie. I mean, this platform is amazing. I'm an award winner once again, and I'm so blessed to be able to continue this legacy. Man, make sure y'all tune in every week. Pop Radio.